Hello players and coaches, welcome to another film study where I break down film of professional or college players to teach players skills, reads, principles that they can learn to take into their game. Hopefully by the end of this video, players watching it, you'll walk away with some specific things you can do to get better as a basketball player. Apart from this film session of Kristaps Porzingis that is designed for post players, if there's anything I can do for you, you can drop a comment below or you can email me at coachmasonwaters at gmail.com. I'll have players reach out to me for workouts, shooting drills, tips on how to get more minutes. Players, if there's anything I can do for you, feel free to reach out. I'll be happy to help. But other than that, I think we are ready to dive into this film session, so let's get started. We'll dive in here with KP's Kristaps Porzingis film. And the first lesson out of this film that I want to teach players is the importance for offensive post players to identify opportunities for a scoring situation. Now, this this lesson is applicable to guards, forwards, point guards, shooting guards, any type of player. But what we'll see in the next three clips are Kristaps Porzingis. He sees and he identifies in the middle of a game an opportunity to do each of these three things. A transition post-up, a ball screen switch and what happens there, and then a rim run. Now, um, basketball is not just about going out and just showing what skills you have. You also have to know the time, score, and situation and match up. And then from there, once you understand uh, kind of where everybody is on the floor, where everybody's matched up, then you can go from there and identify opportunities to score the basket or score a basket. So here's the first clip. We'll watch all the way through. All right. So this clip all the way through, players, whenever you're contesting a shot, obviously, you know, Kristaps Porzingis is seven foot something. So he's really tall and he's going to be able to contest shots a lot better than most people watching this. But nonetheless, every player of every age can contest a shot and look similar to this. The inside arm or whatever arm you're contesting with is fully extended. The landing for the defender right here, he lets LeBron James land without fouling him. The worst thing you can do on defense is foul three-point shooter. After the release of the shot, the hand stays up. So Kristaps Porzingis, his hand is still up contesting LeBron James' shot. And what I also like is he keeps his hand and almost puts it right in front of LeBron James' face, creating more pressure on his shot. But offensively, I think what happened was Chris Stepps Porzingis knew he had, if you look here, he's got a one-on-one -on -one opportunity right there pretty much because all eight other players, including the four other defenders on the Lakers, if Chris Stepps Porzingis gets the ball right here, well, these guys are not in help position. So Chris Stepps Porzingis sees that, and what I love here is he seals his opponent in the middle of the paint. Now, players, when if your offense is, it's, if you have a transition offense where you're trying to bury the defender under the rim, this is a decent spot, but the deeper you can get right near the rim, the better. So high school or college or even middle school, if there was a player doing this, they it would be better to get as close to the rim as possible. But obviously in the NBA, it's hard to move number 23 on the Lakers, whatever his name is. Just kidding, I know it's LeBron. But he posts up and he creates position so that he can receive the pass, and then he has a nice, simple fadeaway jump shot. We'll watch this one through here. He scores on R.J. Barrett. Now, the opportunity, if you remember the first teaching points, it's about you know good offense for a post player or guard. It's about recognizing opportunity. Well, here it's a side ball screen, and what happens is the defense switches. So now, instead of a big being on a big here, the switch happens. Now the big is on Luka Doncic, so it's a big on a guard, a big being defended by a guard, and that's a mismatch. So Luka Doncic knows and Kristaps Porzingis knows, all right, R.J. Barrett, he's still he's a pretty big guy. He's probably 6'7", but even at 6'7", a 7'3 guy posting up on someone who's much shorter, this is still a mismatch. So he, 
Post players, you have to be able to identify mismatches, especially on a pick and roll where there's a switch. You've got to go and post up into the paint. And then, let's say any one of these defenders collapsed and double teamed. Well, whichever defender, if they collapsed and double teamed, then you would just pass it out to the perimeter for an open three. All right, so focus on the change of speed right there from Porzingis. We'll watch that clip one more time. So watch him here and how he notices that a rim run is going to be open. This is basically a read that he makes. He's jogging, he's jogging, and then right there he saw there was going to be a rim run wide open. So there's not much to this clip. Basketball is very simple. The thing in this clip is that you've got to recognize two things about a rim run. Well, if your offense is telling you to sprint every time, sprint every time, but if not, you've got to be able to notice your defender. If they are jogging or lagging behind, you've got to sprint ahead of them to create an opportunity. And then second, what also hurt the Knicks here is that none of these defenders were in help position to slide in and cut off Kristaps Porzingis. So if your defender is, is lagging and there's no help defense, you're in a good position to score. All right, now we're going to look um, at these three teaching points for players. So when you post up and you receive the ball in the post, you've got to keep the ball away from your defender so that they do not knock the basketball out of your hands. You've got to pivot to see the defense. And what I mean here is pivot to see all five defenders. We'll see what I mean by that. And then a skill you've got to be able to have is, is to be able to use multiple shot fakes because your first shot fake is not always going to work perfectly. So let's look at these points here. All right, so keeping the ball away from your defender. Notice here when he catches the ball, he's, well, it's a cross screen right here. So they set a cross screen to get an open post up. And as soon as KP catches the ball, this basketball is on the, his opposite knee and it's away from the defender. Not only that, but KP is in a position in which it's going to be very hard for this defender to reach in and steal the basketball. Now, he's seven, whatever he is, seven, two, seven, three, so it's easy to keep the ball away for him, but this, this same skill of using your elbows, your shoulder, your back, and your body, and putting the basketball on your opposite knee from the defense, that's a skill that all post players should have. Now, when he posts up, he's gonna drop his right foot. So now, when he drops his right foot and as he opens up, he's still able to see all of the defense. So this whole time, he's able to see if any of these defenders were to collapse or trap, he'd be able to see them. And a, a good way to understand that is imagine if KP pivoted so that he went from this position and he moved his right foot forward so that it wrapped around so that he'd go facing the crowd and then facing the baseline and then facing the rim. When he did that, if, if he did that, I should say, then he would be turning his back to the defense. When you post up, you never want to turn your back to help defense because you don't know where they will collapse or trap from. And then the second thing here is notice the spacing of the floor. You have the post up here, and then you've got all four offensive players within the vision of the post player. What a bad example would be is if you know any one of these players were in the corner or directly behind him because if any offensive player goes into the corner directly behind KP, they bring their defender over with them, and then for Chris Stepps Porzingis, he's not going to be able to see that defender. So the spacing here allows for all the help defenders to be in the vision of KP. How he pivoted and opened up to the floor allowed him to see all help, uh, the whole possession. And then second, and we'll watch this all the way through, he just has the ability to use multiple shot fakes. So there's one. There's two, and then he's buying for a score. And then two, notice, on the first shot fake, notice the defender here. So focus on the defender that's guarding Kristaps Porzingis. On the first shot fake, he does a good job of defending the shot fake. His, he raises his hands, but his body, his feet are still on the ground and his knees are still bent. And that's why he's able to stay in front of him. Now on the second shot fake, He's in a much higher position and his feet left the ground, which then allows Porzingis 
to get in there in the lane. So from a defensive perspective in the post, if you're playing post defense, be able to contest shots by keeping your body, your hips down, your knees bent, and your feet on the ground, and just raise your hands up. If you end up jumping and your feet leave the ground like this, that's when the offense is gonna have an advantage. All right, now this one right here is a shot fake again. A couple things to, a couple skills that post players need to have here. So the first here is how Porzingis gets the offensive rebound. So first of all, this is not a very strong rebound, or sorry, this is not a very strong box out by the Trailblazers player right here. But still, Porzingis does a swim move or a rip. There's a lot of different names for it. But either way, he's grabbing, and you have to be careful to not foul here. A lot of refs will let, allow this at, at different levels, but he creates rebounding position, and even though the basketball does not go to him initially, this is still a good move to have for creating rebounding position either way. And then second, this isn't even a great shot fake. I think a good shot fake, the basketball goes all the way up to your chin or to your eyes. But one of the reasons why you can get away or you can still have an effective shot fake um, and make the defender jump is if your eyes and your body position make it look like you're gonna shoot. So he gets the defender up in the air off the shot fake and instead of shooting this shot right here where it would have been contested, he waits for the defender to go by and then goes up, makes an easier layup. And then from the defensive perspective, um, there's a positive and a negative thing that Hassan Whiteside does here. So the first thing that he does is a negative. He jumps before Porzingis shoots. Obviously, you don't want to bite on a shot fake. What he should have done instead is stayed on the ground and walled up. That just means, walling up just means the defender, I need to do a video on that at some point. You can YouTube it on other channels, I'm sure, walling up. But that just means you're basically in this position right here where your hands are up, but your feet are on the ground and you're using your chest and your hips to maintain your position. But even though he jumped, which I guess you could say was a mistake, he didn't make two mistakes. After he jumps, he keeps his hands straight up and he does not foul. Because if he were to foul and Porzingis makes the shot, now Porzingis has the opportunity to get three points. Instead, Hassan Whiteside just keeps his arms up, he doesn't foul, and even though he makes the bucket, well, there's sometimes where you just got to, and sometimes in basketball, you just got to say, all right, we'll let up two points, but two points is better than allowing three points. This is the same thing right here, so watch how he rebounds and gets in position. That's the only thing from this clip that I wanted to show post players is there's two things he does right here to create position. So first is he does a jab step with his right foot. Watch the jab. Jab steps there, and then he uses a little swim move and then gets a tip in. Now, for most, most college, high school, or even middle school players, a tip in like this is going to be pretty hard. So I would suggest for most players, you know, this the move here of jabbing and then using a little swim move with your arms to get rebounding position, that's good. But for most players, you want to catch this basketball with two hands, come down on two feet, shot fake, and then finish. All right, a couple more clips here. So... One, one thing to point out, if your program or your coach is developing your perimeter skills as a post player, that's great. Every program nowadays should be teaching their tall players how to play on the perimeter. So shoot the three, attack off the dribble from the perimeter, maybe play out of the pick and roll, advance the ball up the floor with the dribble. All those, what, are, what used to be called guard skills, but now there's no skills that are only guards or only bigs. Every single player has to have um, all different types of skills. So if you're if you're in a position where your coach is sticking you under the basket and not allowing you to dribble or shoot a mid-range jump shot or a three-point shot, um, I'm not saying that they are completely wrong, but I would say be careful because if they're not developing your overall game, three-point shots, dribbling, playing on the perimeter, then you need to find a better situation, especially middle school and high school players. College players, that might just be your role in the system. 
All right, so one skill offensive post players must have, kind of going off the first point, is that you must catch and shoot is a must-have skill. Super, super simple. And then off of jump shots, you got to be able to attack off of tight or short closeouts. Um, so we'll watch this first clip. Probably watch the first two clips, and then I'll go down and break them down. But these clips right here are just so simple, and that's one of the things I want to do with my YouTube channel and how I serve players is to prove that basketball is just such a simple game. When we watch highlights, when we watch highlights, we'll watch alley oops and James Harden step backs and Kyrie Irving taking 87 dribbles, and that's you know that's fine. They're the best players in the world, but for middle school, high school, college players, 99.99999% of basketball players need to just master the absolute basic fundamentals, the simple, simple parts of basketball. And then that's what these last few clips are. So it's a high ball screen. Seth Curry comes off. It looks like they try to switch, but they don't get the switch. And then very simply, Chris Stapps Porzingis just sets up for a jump shot and knocks it down. And then I'll break down just two little things about his mechanics first. So first of all, on this jump shot, as right before he receives the ball, his pivot foot is already down. So his pivot foot is down, he catches it, and then he just has to move his right foot up, and then he knocks down the shot. And then the second thing in this jump shot is notice how he does not twist his body. So a twist a twist would mean like, like right now his shoulders are pretty much square to the rim, and so are his hips. A twist would mean that by the end of his shot, if he started like this, that his shoulders or his hips would be facing the sideline, let's say. But his shoulders and his hips are facing the rim at the start of his shot. And at the end of his shot, he twists just a little bit. So maybe now his hips are kind of pointed towards the corner. Um, and a little small twist is fine. But the better, uh, the, I should say, the more you can keep your hips square before and after you release your shot, the better and the higher percentage your shooting will be. Same thing here, so this is a trail three. This is a shot you've got to practice, a trail three. So obviously in transition, a guard's taking the ball up the floor, and then as the big, what's going to happen a lot is the the four and five defenders, so we could say X5 and X4. Naturally, post players are just going to sink into the paint, and so if you can take advantage of that and knock down a, a um, trail three in transition, that's a great shot to add to your skill set. Super simple there. That was just a mid-range catch and shoot. One, one thing I want to point out here, well, two things. Again, as I mentioned before, his left foot is already down. His pivot foot is already down before he catches it. So you can see here, left foot is probably down right there. He receives the pass, and now he's just got to move his right foot in, knock down the jump shot. All right, and last one again here. This is a move that's building off of those three-point shots. So let's say, you know, you let's say you've knocked down like we've got three trail three or three-point shots made right here. Let's say in a game you make down, you make a couple three-point shots, a mid-range jump shot. Well, what you've got to be able to do then is if you're making three-point shots, you're going to get closeouts like this, where the defense is going to start respecting your range and so they're going to close out on you and be very tight and so if they're going to be very tight and close out short on you and be close to you you've got to be able to have a jab and drive series which is the move right here and it doesn't even have to be a jab you've just got to be able to have moves where if you get a short close out you can go by that defender so that could be a like this right here is I would say kind of a jab as he catches it he's, he has a split catch but this could be a catch shot fake drive. This could be a catch automatic rip. Another move is as the ball is going in the air, instead of waiting to meet the pass, this player, you know, if this is you as a trail three, you can sprint into the pass and meet the pass. And then as soon as you catch it, you can drive and attack. Whatever move it is that you can have, you've got to be able to have that where you can put the ball on the floor and get to the rim on a short closeout. 
All right, that's it for this film session, and I'll add a few closing remarks here. All right, I know I've given some of you the shooting workouts and these guard workouts that I've put together, but if you have not received three workouts that I've put together and you want them, they're free. Just help me build my channel and you by subscribing to this channel, and then send me a screenshot of your subscription to this channel. You can send it to my Instagram or Twitter, at Mason Waters underscore, or you can email me at Mason, or sorry, at Coach Mason Waters at gmail.com. If you do either one of those and just either way show me that you're subscribed to this channel, I'll be happy to send you these three workouts and I think they'll help you this summer and even going forward as you continue to grow and develop with your game. Other than that, thank you all for watching. Hope it was helpful and I look forward to sharing more with you here soon.